the first thing that everything starts with is with the vision the vision is where the victory begins and the vision is when we victory starts with the vision and not with improvements changes in your life begin with the vision not with improvements many times people when they have a problem they come to God panicking they come to God throwing a fit thinking the louder you scream the louder you threaten God or somehow think that God will fall from his throne or get a migraine headache because you're telling him that you're gonna leave him and tell talk bad about him God seen Hitler and didn't fall from his throne panicking falling into depression to try to move God is not what moves him asking God if you don't change my life I won't follow you that's not where your problem will change where well, your problem will change and this might sound weird is you have to get a different vision God doesn't do miracles first until he does miracles in your head God does a vision inside of your head and I know David could have said I don't need the prophecy I don't need the promise I don't need the vision David that's exactly what you need because you are depressing cycle inside your problem is not just on the outside David the problem got inside already the problem is inside you're suicidal my friends if the problem you're having in your life has gotten inside of you I can assure you most likely God will not be answering your prayer by fixing your problem he'll be first trying to fix you and you will push his hands out and say God that's not the right address go to my husband he fix my husband he's the alcoholic go to my wife she is the one that talks too much go to my crazy kids they're the ones smoking weed and God will come to you and says and you are the one who is depressed suicidal and panicking you are the one that I want to first fix can somebody say amen God will start with giving you a vision he did it to David he didn't bring the women back he didn't throw golden coins from heaven he threw him a word and said David you will go and you will win you know what happened with that promise David's face changed and the Bible says he strengthened himself in the Lord nothing changed nothing changed not one miracle happened yet a son didn't come back home money were not found but what happened is vision came inside and with the vision came hope with the vision came depression was pushed out with the vision came confidence everything will be all right in my life in Jesus name can somebody say amen God has brought you into this place tonight to give you first of all a vision that your situation will change don't wait to have a vision when you see a change receive a vision and then the change will come when our church started and most of you heard this morning when Martin was talking about it our church did not start with powerful preachers our church did not start it with this wonderful voices that we hear today beautiful media or wonderful building or wonderful strategy or services our church started with a man who first of all from God did not receive gifts or did not receive money who did not receive from God souls he received from God a vision he didn't receive from God English language he received a vision and when the vision rested inside of him that vision attracted people that vision attracted finances that vision pulled things out of teenagers that everybody said nothing will ever amount to them that vision pulled talents into the church and that vision is pulling people out of Texas, out of New York, out of Florida. That vision pulled you here. When you're depressed, when you're suicidal and you're blaming it on your problems, you are a magnet to problems in your life. You can pray until you lose your voice for God to change your situation but until God changes the vision on his side you are only going to be attracting problems if God heals you of the sickness you'll get another one if God fixes this financial problem you'll find another financial problem because the problem is also with a magnet change your vision begin to expect different things begin to anticipate different things begin to speak different things vision is what you see it's what you think what you feel and what you speak when the vision came in the heart of our pastor it drew things out of us 
I remember you know my pastor he grew up more in a in a church that believes to worship God like we worship good people worship and uh, I grew up in a church where we were not taught to worship God like this we were worshiping God in a very different way but because of that vision all of the hindrances all of the barriers were pushed out and eventually people start coming to Jesus who are Hispanic, who are American, who are businessmen, who are drug addicts, different men and different women start coming to Jesus because of this vision. Your vision has to be clear. Many people's vision is blurry. I remember I talked to one a wonderful youth pastor, a friend of mine. I asked him what is the vision you have for your youth ministry and he used this long Shakespeare's send, almost a sandwich statement. It sounded like sandwich where I want the believers who are reigning in Christ to begin to be sanctified to reach their neighbors for the glory of Almighty God for the future coming of the saints and the rulership of the earth and he used this fancy fancy words I'm like are you the only one in your church who can repeat that he's like yes I was like I am I have a feeling that nobody else in the church knows the vision he's like well they know we are here to worship God that's not a vision that's why you are breathing but that's not why you are living a vision has to be laser specific. It can't be we are here to establish a Sunday school, heal the sick, uh, help the poor and we also want to have a wonderful music, want to help the elders. That is not a vision. That's a multitasking that will never work with the vision. Vision has to be laser specific. We are here for one thing and that thing is what Jesus lived for and died for and left us for and gave us the Holy Spirit for. See people saved and see people saved for the glory of God. Can somebody say amen? A vision not only it has to be clear a vision always has to be repeated people are like boats if you put them in the middle of the ocean they won't stay in the middle they will drift it takes one month and the church will drift from the vision if the pastor if the leadership does not repeat and brainwash people with that vision when do they stop never because it's a human capacity to drift if our pastor will not remind us within few months we will lose the vision because that's how we are we are always drifting to the latest fads and you always need somebody who will cast the same vision all the time all the time and all the time now we've become like that where we cast the vision you probably sat in the three services and you saw we are like a broken tape recorder the same thing everybody gets up and the same thing new people come in they get saved for service and they already doing the same thing because when you cast it long enough it creates a snowball effect where it becomes automatically for people to believe what you're saying another thing about the vision is the vision of the church or the vision of your life always has to be supported by your organizational structure the challenge happens with the vision is every church has a vision to save souls as long as saving souls is a department I remember I came to one young young man and I said um, what are you guys doing to bring people into salvation he said hey Lucy come over here I said well Lucy your evangel uh, Lucy is the one that handles our evangelism I am pastor she handles the evangelism he is the worship leader she is the Sunday school teacher and this guy is in charge of the parking lot and this person is in charge of the media and every month we switch off now I just described to you a typical church and I asked I told him one thing I said where did you see where Jesus said that you can save souls without first seeking souls you are divided Bible says seek and save you can't save if you don't seek evangelism and salvation of souls is not a department it's a direction as long as it's a department in our church people will never be saved continuously if it's a department means every department in our church works for a direction the vision is a direction not a department this is not a like oh we are on this uh, spiritual uh, move right now for next few months about souls and next week we're gonna go on on prayer and the week after that we'll go on on healing the week after that we'll go on the children's ministry that will never work as long as it's a department instead of a direction it won't last because somebody say amen you have to make it a direction Sunday school works for this direction 
youth ministry works for this direction people on the cameras work for this direction people on the worship team work for this direction people who are greeters work for this direction pastor works for this direction everyone works even the church mice has to work for that direction can somebody say amen <laughs> 